Terminal alkynes are essentially the most acidic hydrocarbon CH bonds in organic chemistry because of the stability of a lone pair in an sp hybrid orbital. And so we can readily generate these acetylide anions, the conjugate bases of terminal alkynes. And these are excellent nucleophiles in S and 2 alkylations because they contain a negatively charged carbon atom. And so we can react these with alkyl halides to form new carbon-carbon bonds. And we love this. Organic chemists love making carbon-carbon bonds because this is what allows us to make organic molecules bigger, in a sense, and more complex, right, with more carbon-carbon bonds. And so this is the first of many reactions I think we'll see in organic chemistry where we're making carbon-carbon bonds. And the idea here is simply S in 2 substitution of an alkyl halide using an acetylide nucleophile. Now this is an SN2 reaction and everything you know about the SN2 reaction still applies. The alkyl halide must be primary or methyl because these acetylide anions are still fantastic bases. And so if what we want to happen is SN2 substitution like this with the acetylide adding, uh, attacking this electrophilic carbon with loss of this bromide leading group, this carbon has got to be primary or methyl. If it's secondary or tertiary, we're going to see elimination instead, since this acetylide anion is still a pretty strong base, right? A pKa for the conjugate acid of 25 is still pretty basic, and so we have to watch out for E2 elimination in the case of sterically hindered alkyl halides, secondary and tertiary alkyl halides. If we start with acetylene, which is sort of like a doubly terminal alkyne, we can actually add two different alkyl groups through this SN2 substitution methodology. So for example, we could start by deprotonating with one equivalent of NaNH2, that generates acetylide, and then hit with one alkyl halide, let's call it R1CH2Br, since it needs to be primary. That gets us to here, where we functionalize kind of the red carbon of the alkyne, but we have another CH bond, CSPH bond that we can deprotonate with another equivalent of NaNH2. And we can add in a second alkyl halide, potentially different structure, R2 and R1 do not need to be the same. And we've generated a sort of asymmetrically substituted or unsymmetrical alkyne with two different groups linked to the two carbons of the alkyne. It is imperative, however, that we have CH2 groups here and here to make sure that those SN2 reactions go off without a hitch and we avoid competing elimination. Let's work this practice problem to see how we can put this SN2 alkylation of terminal alkynes to good use. So here we're asked to design a synthesis of this internal alkyne from acetylene. And so we need to add two carbon groups on either end of the acetylene molecule. And we've just seen that we can do this using SN2 reactions, particularly since these two carbons are both primary, right? We could imagine primary alkyl halides being used, for example, ethyl bromide to install this and benzyl bromide to install this on acetylene. But we want to take it back one step at a time because we need to install each alkyl group kind of in turn. It doesn't really matter which alkyl group you install uh, last, I suppose, thinking in reverse. But to me, benzyl bromide made more sense to install last because it's the more reactive alkyl halide, more than likely than, than ethyl bromide in, in SN2, although that's rather debatable. But in any event, it, it doesn't matter which of these bonds you imagine kind of breaking in the reverse direction as we're thinking backwards. Here, I started by breaking this bond taking it back to this benzyl bromide and this terminal alkyne. And we can further simplify this terminal alkyne back to acetylene by breaking this bond in the reverse direction, disconnecting this bond if you like. And we've got an ethyl bromide electrophile and the acetylene starting material. And the key in terms of reagents in the forward direction is we need to use a base to deprotonate the terminal alkyne of sufficient strength something like NaNH2 or sodium hydride. So we, in the first step, for example, we could use sodium hydride that deprotonates the acetylene, generates an acetylide anion, and then treatment with ethyl bromide establishes this carbon-carbon bond and an SN2 reaction. Then we essentially rinse and repeat with our second electrophile, benzyl bromide here, starting with sodium hydride and then benzyl bromide, and this establishes the other new carbon-carbon bond in the target. So highly useful. And you can imagine we could take this product and do all kinds of things with it, right? We could do dissolving metal reduction to get the transalkene. We could reduce to an alkane. We could do Lindlar hydrogenation to get the cisalkene. The world is our oyster now that we have this carbon-carbon triple bond as a functional and synthetic handle in the target. 
One thing that's useful about alkynes is that they can be converted into alkenes or alkanes, and we've seen how to do this using H2 and Lindlar's catalyst to go from an alkyne to an alkene or dissolving metal reduction. And we know we can go from an alkene to an alkane using hydrogenation. And each of those classes of uh, functional group has its own set of reactions. Alkynes have their additions. Alkenes have their additions. We can also go in the opposite direction from alkanes all the way up to alkynes. We haven't touched on radical chemistry in detail just yet, but we'll soon see that radical halogenation can be used to install a halogen on an alkane strategically. And after elimination, the net result is conversion of the alkane into an alkene. We can convert an alkene into an alkyne using halogenation and elimination chemistry. So for example, we know how to halogenate in a 1-2 sense an alkene, and then that vicinal dihalide can be eliminated to establish the triple bond, establish the, uh, the alkyne. So we also know a way to convert alkenes into alkynes. A lot of synthetic flexibility here, and we're really enlarging our synthetic toolbox in connecting carbon-carbon triple bonds, double bonds, and single bonds here.